Paramahansa Yogananda, author of Autobiography of a Yogi, was the first yoga master of India to live and teach in the West. Arriving in 1920, Yogananda barnstormed across America. Enthusiastic audiences filled the largest halls to hear him speak. For over 15 years, Yogananda crisscrossed the U.S., giving lectures and classes in scores of major cities. Yogananda's initial impact was truly impressive, but his lasting influence is greater still. He was a true spiritual revolutionary whose message of joy is as vital today as ever. In 1946, Yogananda published his Autobiography of a Yogi, one of the most influential books of our time. Autobiography of a Yogi helped launch and continues to inspire a far-reaching worldwide spiritual revolution. Yogananda's Autobiography of a Yogi has sold well over 10 million copies and has been translated into 34 different languages. Probably the most shared book in the world, well-loved copies passed with enthusiasm from friend to friend. The number of people who have read the Autobiography of a Yogi could easily surpass 30 million. More than a book, Autobiography of a Yogi is a cultural phenomenon. In 1967, the Beatles released Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. The cover included pictures of Yogananda and his line of gurus, Sri Yukteswar, Lahiri Mahashaya, and Babaji. Beatle George Harrison remained inspired by the autobiography for the rest of his life. He often gave copies away to people he met, from Gary Wright to President Ford. Yogananda has influenced generations of artists, authors, activists, and scientists, including Mahatma Gandhi, Elvis Presley, Russell Simmons, Ravi Shankar, Thomas Mann, Marianne Williamson, Steve Jobs, and hundreds of others. Ravi Shankar, eminent musician and composer, said, I have read many books on yoga by yogis, but I was never as impressed as with this book. It has some magic in it. Jack Canfield, author, motivational speaker, and entrepreneur said, you would be hard pressed to find anyone on the spiritual path whose life has not been influenced by this profound work of literature. It started me on the path of yoga, meditation, and self-exploration that has continued until this day. Steve Jobs' recent passing was marked by the revelation that, since he first discovered it in the 70s, he read Autobiography of a Yogi once a year for the rest of his life. The autobiography was the only book on his iPad, and he had it given to everyone who attended his funeral. His final words as he lay on his bed at home were, Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. The revolutionary spiritual teachings of Yogananda and Autobiography of a Yogi have been woven into our modern society by its scientific and universal approach to spirituality. I interviewed more than 300 people for American Veda, and I asked them how they first got interested in Indian spiritual teachings. Overwhelmingly, the most frequently mentioned book was Autobiography of a Yogi. It was probably more instrumental in solidifying people's understanding and uh, the, their commitment to their spiritual paths than any other book. In the 1920s, when Yogananda first campaigned across the U.S., meditation was almost unheard of. Now, meditation is taught to children, used by athletes, and extolled by business leaders. Its benefits confirmed by scientists. The central message of Autobiography of a Yogi is the power of meditation to lift our hearts and minds into joy. 
Yogananda personally initiated over 100,000 people into the meditation technique of Kriya Yoga. More than just a technique, Kriya Yoga is the key to a fulfilling spiritual life. A 2016 study by Yoga Journal revealed that today, over 36 million Americans practice yoga postures. Yoga postures were only one piece of Yogananda's solution for living a balanced, healthy life. If the Western brothers only could learn the methods of the yogis, then they would learn to live 100 years in perfect health, happiness, and great success. He opened the first vegetarian restaurant in Los Angeles. In 1927, he offered a health plan for then-President Calvin Coolidge, including exercise, meditation, a worry fast, and a meatless diet of fresh fruit, vegetables, nuts, and whole grains. Well known in the 1950s and 60s, Charles Atlas's dynamic tension bodybuilding mail order course was inspired in part by Yogananda's energization exercises. Autobiography of a Yogi influenced trailblazers in the field of holistic health, including Andrew Weil, groundbreaking physician of integrative medicine and author of Eight Weeks to Optimum Health. Joan Borisenko, PhD and author of numerous influential works, including Minding the Body, Mending the Mind, helped pioneer mind-body medicine and the relaxation effect at Harvard University. Frequently, people ask me, how did a scientist become interested in the spiritual? And in fact, it was somebody with spiritual experience who became interested in science. I had an experience for which I had at that time no context at all. And it was an experience of cosmic consciousness. I picked up a copy of Autobiography of a Yogi. I read that book and it so resonated with me. I was absolutely amazed. Author of the best-selling Sharing Nature books, Joseph Cornell, was deeply influenced by Yogananda and the Autobiography of a Yogi. I first read Autobiography of a Yogi in 1975, and I was thrilled the way that Yogananda spoke about samadhi and feeling himself as part of all creation. And he laid out a clear format on how to do that. I wrote a book called Sharing Nature that created experiences that would help people merge with a rock or a tree or with all of life. Yogananda, he called his spiritual work self-realization because he believed that personal experience was more important than intellectual understanding. Autobiography of a Yogi was dedicated to Luther Burbank, famous horticulturist and saintly friend of Yogananda. Luther Burbank pioneered the science of hybridizing fruits, nuts, and vegetables. From the depths of slumber, Nina Simone, performer and activist, was given autobiography of a yogi by her father. In tribute to Yogananda, she put to music and performed his poem, God, God, God. Constantly arms unheard by any Throughout the autobiography, there are numerous references to modern science and the scientific approach of yoga and meditation. In the chapter, The Law of Miracles, Yogananda describes the intersection of the soul-expanding yogic science and Einstein's conceptions of light as the foundation of the universe. Close disciples of Yogananda were profoundly transformed. I can't tell you how it happened, but it was a little scrap of paper on the floor in my bedroom. I picked it up, wadded it, and tossed it in the wastebasket. When I dove after it, I knew my answer was on that. I knew it, and I took it out and opened it up, and it said, Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramhansa Yogananda. I um, 
got the book immediately and started reading it. A friend of mine called and said, you don't ask me how I know. I can't have, I don't have any explanation. But I met somebody last night. I feel I have to introduce you to. He has the oddest name. It's something like um, Paramhansa Vervananda. I said, I'll be down. I'll never forget uh, walking up those three flights of stairs in Mount Washington to the third floor where, where Master was staying. And uh, I was getting more nervous as, as I started to climb up the stairs. It was just, this is such a big moment for me. And Master opened the door and uh, he just held out his arms like that, he gave me a big hug. And I just felt that I'd come home. Think ye in thy heart, lotus feet of thy Guru. Swami Kriyananda, one of Yogananda's foremost disciples, was an author, composer, brilliant speaker, and founded Ananda communities around the world. My desire was to find the truth. I was desperate to know the truth. And I finally reached the point where I knew without God there could not be truth. I found autobiography of a yogi and I took the next bus across the country. The first words I said to Yogananda, I never imagined I would say such words to anybody. I said, I want to be your disciple. I lived with him for three and a half years. And uh, I have to say those were the most important years of my life. Yogananda said in Autobiography of a Yogi, that thoughts are universally, not individually rooted. You don't create your thoughts. You are an instrument for manifesting them, depending on the level of consciousness on which you live. And when that level is high, then you are happy. When that level is low, you are unhappy. The one thing everyone is looking for is happiness. Why? Because we all want our true self. We've come from bliss. We're his creatures, and we want that bliss again. God is Satchitananda, ever existing, ever conscious, and Yogananda added, ever new bliss. His mission was simply one, to bring souls to God. God bless you. Autobiography of a Yogi continues to inspire. Seventy years later, its revolutionary spiritual teachings and its timeless message of joy resonate as deeply today as when it was first written.